Hello everybody and welcome to the second episode of, in fact, the first episode since the previous one was a pilot episode of CPE Bach in Pieces. My name is Wim Winters and this is a series in which I'm going to read together with you in bits and pieces the famous work of CPE Bach that he wrote on keyboard techniques. So it's a Versuch über die wahre Art das Klavier zu spielen, treatise on the true art of playing the keyboard. It's worth revisiting for me, and while I'm rereading that, why not sharing that with you? There is a pilot episode in which I talk about the whole project and where it will lead to. I will link here in the description and in the video, so you can check it out if this is your first time here on the CPE Bach in Pieces series. So in this episode, I just wanted to give you a short overview of his life and some dates, some milestones, very short, so not diving into his work. That will be for some later episodes. We're building up the uh, episodes so that we have the information all at hand. So I take my paper because I would miss a lot of dates if I wouldn't. So C.P.E. Bach, Karl Philipp Emanuel Bach was born in 1714 in Weimar, obviously as a second son of uh, Johann Sebastian Bach. March the 8th, two days after my birthday. So in 1720, his mother, Maria Barbara, died. And in 1721, Father Bach married again to, with Anna Magdalena Bach. Anna Magdalena Wilke, in fact. Later Bach, known as Anna Magdalena Bach. In 1723, very important, they moved to Leipzig. And in 1731, at age 18, uh, Karl Philipp Emanuel Bach matriculates as a law student at the University of Leipzig. He then moved to Frankfurt and then Oder, under Oder in 1734, where he in 1734 matriculates at the university there. And then in 1738, a major date in his life, he enters the service of in Berlin of Crown Prince and later Crown Prince of Russia, later and from 1740 onwards, the King Frederick the Great. So there also were musicians like Quans, and you had a lot of keyboard players as well. So it was a very active musical life in Berlin. He was never happy, in fact, really there. So he wanted to move to a place where he possibly could write uh, music that was appreciated a little bit more. Frederick the, the Great was really in favor of Quans being himself a flute traverse player. Anyway, in 1742, a very important date, he uh, wrote the Prussian sonatas. In 1744, he marries to Johanna Dannemann. In 1744, another very important uh, work is the Württemberg sonatas. I've played one on the channel and all of the six are really, in fact, mind-blowing works. Also seeing the date 1744, remember Father Bach still was alive and still the style of these works were different, much different to what Father Bach was writing. And it's just wondering how much Father Bach was pushing their children, his children, for this new direction, since appreciation for the old polyphonic style that Bach still, Father Bach still was using was really diminishing fast. Father Bach always kept to that. But his sons who were making his, their way in musical life had to adapt to a more modern style, which was not fugues anymore. To Karl Philipp Emanuel Bach's regret all his life, by the way. So in 1750, obviously, his father died on July 28, and Emanuel applied unsuccessfully for his father's position in Leipzig. It would have been great to have Emanuel in the position of his father, even writing church cantatas and things like that, more in the polyphonic style, what he really would like, have, what he would like to do. So, and then 1753 comes the publication of the first part of his Versuch. That's the book we're going to discuss. 1762, second part. 1767, sorry, 1767, yes. He's appointed director, so he's moving from Berlin. He's appointed music director of the five churches in Hamburg, succeeding his late godfather, Georg Philipp Tillemann. So Tillemann was the godfather of Emanuel Bach. And after having applied for that a long time, actually applied, he was accepted rather soon in, in Hamburg to succeed his godfather Tillemann. But in uh, Berlin, the king didn't want to let him go very, uh, or reluctantly. So, but after a while, he got the permission to go to Hamburg in 1772, got 
the famous visit of Bernie. If you not know Charles Bernie, that's a book we certainly have to cover on the channel. Charles Bernie was an English musician, a music historian, what's that in English? But he wrote uh, books about music history, traveled whole Europe to visit people and to meet composers, musicians, um, and actually kept a diary from his visits, which were published already in the time. So Bernie gave us a unique insight in the musical life in Europe. And he, of course, traveled to Emmanuel Bach. And that's an amazing quote. That's one of the most beautiful dedications that you can imagine to the clavier chord. If you read that, you understand really the power of that instrument in this time and why people who play it today are so uh, enthusiastic about the clavier chord. Anyway, in 1780, he sells the rights and remaining stock of his Versuch to Engelhard Benjamin Schwickert. So it's interesting to notice and to remember, and I've made some videos on the channel, try to link them here in the, uh, in the, in, on the screen, on CPE Bach, how he was in a kind of period, his father was in church service and publications became possible, so his father published his own works, some of them, the Klavierbung, amongst the others, but it's, Emmanuel is really in the way to a, a musician that was a self-publishing artist <clears throat> and tried to find his way in that. He was a very smart businessman. He had contracts with Breitkopf who printed his works but not would sell them. He would sell them there himself. So he was constantly busy with um, communication with his agents who were distributing his works having a list of subscriptions of people who would buy his work up front and most of his scores were printed in in editions of 1050 uh, copies so it's really not it's it's really a lot so by the end of his life 7080 uh, obviously he didn't know that he was approaching the end of his life but he was growing older and older his house was filled with piles of uh, compositions of prints Mostly he was very successful in selling them, but of course, over the course of so many years, <clears throat> you can imagine that certainly for the Versuch, if he would have ordered 300 copies, let's say, that if he sells 200 of them, 100 copies from each part is really a lot. So he wanted to get rid of everything. 1780 starts, you can write in his, as you can read in his letters, the whole process, how he's uh, coping with that. 1782, he decides to even burn all this correspondence, also with Forkel and people like that. So that's really, he shouldn't have done that, but that's to clean his house. He was, his house was packed with manuscripts, with, with letters, with, with uh, books, with publications. So in 1780, that's the moment where he sold the rights for his book to Schwickert. And 17, and we're going to talk about publications and the uh, several prints that he had of the book had in the next episode. In 1787, which is an important date, it's one year before he died. It stayed in very good health until the end. He published the Auferstehung, a work that's a, a cantata. It's a mind-blowing work. If you haven't heard that, there is on YouTube a performance with uh, La Petite Bonde by Sigiswald Kuyken which is the beginning only explains to you why people like Mozart admired his work so much. I mean, that's, that's, that's really new music. At the end of his life in the Overstehung, he said, I'm going to lose money on this, but I want to have it published because that's the way I want to be remembered one year before his death. So that's really a nice symbolic moment for him. And um, what's also nice at the end of his life, so he died in 1788, 14th of December, um, 
he got a lot of recognition also from the renewal of interest in polyphonic writings. You know, we've talked about that on Beethoven, Mozart, other people. It was a raise of interest in, in, in the history of music. Father Bach, of course, was in the spotlights in very small circles. So it's, it's, a, it's a fairy tale that Father Bach was only rediscovered by Mendelssohn. That's all, all 19th century romanticism. But um, Breitkopf, in fact, asked uh, C.P.E. Bach, so Emanuel Bach, to write fugues again because people also, Mozart was asking for that and he refused. Uh, he said, my time is over, you should have asked before. So luckily we had people like Mozart and Beethoven and Haydn who would, uh, and others who would uh, really uh, give us pieces with counterpoint and, and music that maybe Emanuel Bach would have written as well. So that's the short overview of his life just to have the dates in front of our eyes if we're going to uh, proceed to next episode. Next episode will be an, an overview of the editions of the Versuch and then in the, pre, in the, uh, it, the uh, episode after that we're going to discuss the content of what's in the book. So that's the content of the two next episodes. If you'd like to stay updated of these uh, episodes, they will appear every two weeks on Thursday at 5 p.m. So that's the release date of the CPA Bach in Pieces series. And no better way to stay updated than to hit the subscribe button of the channel. And then you stay, you get a notification from YouTube every time I make a new video. Um, I wanted to point out to close this video with that I want to do it with you. I'm not a CPE Bach expert, by far I'm not. I'm going to say stupid things, mistakes, but I hope I will, and I hope you will address them, and then I will correct them as we go on this path, on this journey together with you. So thank you for that. Thank you for watching. See you next time again. Bye.